Hey guys, just a quick vlog where I'm gonna answer a question that was put to me. So let me get to my trusty old laptop that breaks all the time. The beautiful MacBook Pro 2016. Um, somebody wrote to me, wouldn't C++ teach you how to program even better? So I'm gonna read my short answer. It depends on the type of programming you want to do. C++ programming, is very different than most Java, Python, and JS programming. I would say, for the most part, you will likely be doing higher level programming in your career, uh, most people will, so you'd be better off learning more modern languages since it's closer to the style, if you will, of modern, of modern programming that you're probably gonna be getting into. I don't necessarily think any particular language is necessarily better for teaching than any other language and I'm someone who's written commercial software over the years using eight or nine languages. That said, I would lean towards teaching with a, uh, a language like a Python, like a JavaScript over a C++ simply because it's easier in some respects to get stuff going with languages like Python or JavaScript, meaning it's easier to, to show something that the students can see once they start programming. Unless, of course, you got uh, someone who, who's really just into, I don't know, what are little detailed algorithms and stuff like that, then you can express that reasonably quickly with C++, but we're visual creatures, humans are. And so if you're using Python, using JavaScript, you can see things happen real quickly with those languages. You get results much more quickly than you could with C++ or C. And you know that's why a lot of modern programming is done with these higher level languages like a Python, like a JavaScript. You know, like a Swift, for example, rather than dropping into languages like C++. So, yeah, in terms of learning how to code, uh, a lot of schools used to teach way back in the day C++, and then they moved into Java because Java was just easier and more productive. Uh, you got a lot more done with less code. And now people are migrating more and more into teaching with Python, because Python has a, a, a syntax, which is a code. Syntax is just a code that you write. The Python syntax reads more like English than, say, Java. And again, you can get a lot done quicker with Python code, with less lines of code than you can with Java. Uh, a thing that I've noticed over the last 25 years of being involved in code is that the industry tends to go towards the easier to write languages uh, or the faster to write languages versus the faster at runtime languages. So does that mean C++, if you write an app in C++, it's going to run circles around Java, JavaScript, PHP, Python, especially Ruby. It's going to run circles around all those languages in terms of runtime speed. Your, your C++ application is going to be blazing fast. The problem is, by the time you finish writing your C++ applications, uh, the, the person who's writing a similar application in Python or uh, in Java or, or JavaScript or whatnot, they've already you know, moved on to 10 other projects. Maybe they're actually retired at this point in time. You know, that's the problem with C++. It just takes so long to get anything done. So C++ is becoming more and more of a specialized language. As a result of that, the industry moves towards faster write time languages because uh, the advantage, uh, the speed advantage that you saw, you see in languages like C++ or C over the others is becoming a moot point, is becoming irrelevant as computer hardware it just gets more and more powerful so you don't see the speed difference in practical application. So if you're learning how to program, would I learn with C++ to begin with? No, I think you would have to learn too many concepts at the same time. A, B, you're going to find yourself 
uh, writing a lot of code with no payoff, no emotional payoff, meaning you don't see something. With just a few lines of code, you can start animating with Python. With just a few lines of code, you can start animating and creating functional applications in JavaScript. Forget about it. With C++, you forget about it. The only exception is maybe if you want to start uh, writing code for IoT devices, you know, watches or thermostats or something, uh, then you're going to be writing in C, maybe C++, where you're going to be interfacing with these uh these little pieces of hardware that require a language like C or C++ uh, require maybe too strong of a word, but it's better because they don't have powerful CPUs on board because they're such tiny devices. So you could take advantage in a lot of situations of C++ and C for that. That being said, I haven't looked at IoT in a while, and they may be writing IoT code in Python at this point in time, or Java, who knows? Uh, Java was actually written at one point it was it was used on embedded systems for you know running your fridge or something so i wouldn't be surprised if it's being used in iot as well although i have not looked at that all right i hope that helps yeah c plus plus it would not be my first language to learn with and you're not going to learn how to code any better yes when you do c plus plus you're going to be finding yourself uh, working on like memory management on a uh, personal level if you will and you'll be learning about that where you wouldn't learn about that with Python so much or with JavaScript or with Java or with uh, PHP, with uh, C Sharp, simply because these languages take care of that headache for you. And uh, so it's kind of like an antiquated thing uh, to have to worry about low level memory management. And just to back up, if you're not aware, uh, with languages like C and C++, you had to manage in your software writing, you had to manage how your application was managing memory. And it was a source of huge amount of headaches and bugs. So when Java came out, they decided to, to, to take care of that for you. They had something called a garbage collector, which was revolutionary. So you didn't have to worry about memory management and uh, all the headaches involved with that, which eliminated a lot of bugs and a lot of complexity in code. And uh, other languages like Python and PHP, all the brand new languages, they take care of that for you, for the most part. So yeah, if you learn how to program in Python or with C Sharp or Java, you're not going to have to worry about things that you have to learn in, uh, in C++ or C. That doesn't teach you any better to have to learn this stuff. It's it's a kind of antiquated stuff. You know, it's kind of like saying if I, if I want to be a chef, shouldn't I learn how to raise chickens and uh, and uh, grow a, a garden? No, that's not being a chef these days, right? You just prepare the food. You don't need to to uh, have to go farm the animals. Uh, so there you go. I hope that makes sense. Bye bye. Actually, before I go, uh, link below. Check out my Need to Nerd newsletter. I decided to put out a newsletter recently, a launch a new newsletter rather, simply because I want to have direct communications with you guys. I don't want to necessarily be wholly dependent on the social media platforms. You will get exclusive video content in this newsletter that I do not publish on any social media platform. That's your incentive, all right, to join the newsletter. All right, we'll talk soon. Bye. Thank you.